Home Healer here of course and uh, what I'm taking you through here is a bit of a tutorial video on the pre-stretch stretching that I've done up <coughs> so we've got Van Dam at the top there and the pre-stretch stretching and we'll just go through and we'll read through that of course you can get a downloaded um, copy of this uh, just contact me through the email and of course um, uh, basically you've got to be a member of our organization but you can talk to me about that um, okay so this routine is designed to be done daily as a standalone routine or a pre-stretch stretch routine before the major stretching session which should be three times a week the major uh, say PM Yun Jun Do or whatever martial art that you're uh, training in. This pre-stretch routine is designed to be done either in the morning, lunchtime or uh, keep ma to maintain and keep your stretch reflexes in check and to make certain the flexibility that you've gained is maintained. Um, it focuses on connective tendons, muscle to bone and the Golgi or Golgi, I call them Golgi, Golgi, I can pronounce a couple of ways, nerve receptors which give feedback to the brain to preset the muscle, muscle lengths. So um, this system is something that we've done for years but there's various people out there that um, who are pretty good uh, with uh, their science and their stretching. I think the original one that um, I followed was Thomas Kurtz and you can see a copy of his book uh, on the healyshealth.com website um, he's from um, the European country somewhere and uh, usually you find those uh, guys are pretty good with the flexibility sort of things now um, not everyone's flexible some people are born flexible um, and you'll see that in classes especially children's classes but some people got to work on their flexibility um, such as myself uh, I've got speed I've got power and the flexibility I've got to work on but in saying that what I'm saying to 99% of the people I'll say 100% of the people out there can with regular training increase their flexibility dramatically so generally I would say in a probably six to twelve week period uh, if you are training three times a week uh, and focusing a lot on the flexibility side of things uh, you will increase your current flexibility by 60 to 70 percent so you know if you can, can only as an example if you can only you bend over to touch your toes you know you can make it to your knees uh, within six weeks you'll be touching your toes provided you haven't got a, some sort of permanent back injury or something we don't know about so in saying that uh, the little disclaimer is here that uh, you uh, uh, you should if you've got any issues like this in all stretching if there's sharp pain that radiates like an electrical pulse you stop that whatever you're doing immediately now I've done six years of medical science um, and I focused on uh, chiropractic training at the university level so uh, you know we do in that training I've done radiography I actually qualified to do radiographic images if I want to not that I want to but I've certainly done all the physics and all the training to do that um, and also uh, the biomechanics and the nervous system and uh, all the musculoskeletal training that we do in uh, med the med science uh, degree that I'm completing I've taken six years to do it but um, we do a lot of musculoskeletal part of that university level training uh, and so just to give you a little bit of idea um, as compared to say a general practitioner I'm not talking surgeons or anything like that but the training that a um, university level um, science degree for chiropractic and that level of, of training um, usually 
uh, you do uh, something like three times the uh, more than a general GP or general practitioner, medical doctor does regarding radiography and we do 13 times more um, uh, physiology, basically the exercise physiology slash learn about neurology, the nervous system, the uh, musculoskeletal system and uh, all that and how to uh, uh, basically manipulate the musculoskeletal system to get uh, the best results. So the chiropractic training uh, is uh, basically very very similar along the lines of a orthopedic surgeon so that that style of trance more biomechanics and all that but certainly uh, when you compare what um, the base training is with a chiropractor now, now I'm not promoting all chiropractors uh, I'm just promoting the individual who knows what he's talking about because it's a, in the various disciplines it all boils down, no matter what degrees I have at university, it all boils down to what their actual experience is in the background. And uh, there's a lot of characters out there that I wouldn't recommend people to. However, I'm just explaining to you that when I'm talking to, to you about these procedures that um, after six years of study at university and associated with a lot of fairly uh, uh, qualified people um, that uh, basically I know what I'm talking about in the area that I'm not just doing university studies I'm actually putting it into practice because I've been training physically well I'm 67 now so I've been training well over 50 years including elite level martial arts okay so that's that sort of description and I wanted to say that because it gives you some confidence in what I'm talking about here so I'm not just talking off the top of my head I'm talking with like six years study um, in all sorts of levels now so um, we'll go down to here and you know, what, what, what we've got um, here is a diagram of a muscle you know let's say it's probably looks like that could be uh, in the quadricep perhaps it could be any muscle anywhere so the uh, reference here, uh, none of these videos are for sale or none of these PDFs are for sale, they're for edu educational purposes only. And uh, please refer to the book uh, Anatomy and Physiology by Totora, page 553, which is one, one of my textbooks. Um, so when you look at the receptors, you see here where the muscle connects to the bone, the bone would be over here that's the tendon. Now the difference between tendons and ligaments, ligaments go from bone to bone and tendons go from muscle to bone. Now you see here this is a uh, sensory receptor or neuron, goglii receptor, uh, which the best way to describe that is say you're falling to sleep right, and you, your head keeps you know, nodding off, oh, you come up like that, that's a goglii receptor or Golgi receptor, you can pronounce it that way too. And in the muscles, you know, the muscles operate a, a very much like, um, sort of like zippers in a way. So, you know, they move backwards and forwards, the actin and myosin, so they contract and stretch, contract and stretch. You've got to remember one thing with muscles. You know, people say, oh, well, I'm not very flexible. Well, uh, if you're put under antiseptic, in a hospital, and I used to work in hospitals, um, suddenly you're all relaxed. Suddenly your muscles are flopping everywhere. Suddenly you can do the splits if you're unconscious. Suddenly you, you can do the Van Damme splits if you're under anesthetic, funnily enough. right? Now the reason why you can do that is that the muscles actually stretched to about 130% of their length. Right, so you, you never push them to the 130 percent, obviously. And the uh, receptors here, or the the neurofeedback system, uh, stops you from achieving the flexibility that you want to achieve. Right now, there's a couple of ways. Look, there's a very good. Um, uh, education system out there called hyperbolic stretching so you want to search that on the internet 
um, the guy again who does that's from the uh, European countries usually the European guys are pretty good with all this and um, uh, he, I suggest you have a look at that system called hyperbolic stretching and um, it marries in it integrates into what I'm teaching anyhow so I've used some of that um, uh, philosophy uh, to marry in what we already know now in the muscles you know for instance when you're talking about the um, hip flexors right and you're talking about the um, adductors right and the hamstrings so hip stretch hip flexors abductors and hamstrings are the main groups of muscles that have got to be uh, stretched so that you can do the Van Damme splits or you can do forward splits or you can do kicks safely without tearing the muscles right so the important part is where I've got this big red arrow is where the muscle turns into tendon and the tendon joins with the bone that particular part there around about here where the muscle joins there is the usual issues now also I can expand on this I won't do too much in this video but I can expand on this in such that if you get this stretching appropriately increase say over a 6 to 12 week period you'll find all sorts of pains and aches go away because what happens is as and this comes from my um, chiropractic training at, uh, and med science degree which I'll finish off this year I've got one subject left so uh, what you'll find is that when you're stretched out regularly and I'm talking three times a week that the tendons and what have you that um, connect around say the knee joint the back of the knee, the front of the knee, the side of the knee and its associated muscle groups uh, when they're relaxed they take a lot of pressure off your knee, your lower back, your hips the whole box and dice. Okay, so it's sort of self-correcting postural alignment right you hear a lot of people talking about postural alignment <laughs> and uh, unfortunately it, they'll talk about it, they'll lecture you at university, they'll talk till they're black in the face or red in the face and yet, in my experience, even in the cohort of, of uh, group that I was in university with, most of them couldn't even touch their toes, and yet they were learning musculoskeletal therapy. I mean, anyway, I'm not going to go there. So the, the thing is that you can learn the theory. That's great. Let's put it into practice. Okay, so this is part of the education that I do is put put um, medical and uh, physiological theory into reality can it be practically used uh, for rehab for um, sport uh, for, for martial arts like we, we're doing and can you maintain it over time now here's I've just put this other diagram in which is really the same as that left one so you've got the muscle there the tendon up here you've got a motor neuron sensory neuron and a uh, Golgi tendon organ here and you can see what happens this is a, um, a feedback system goes through the spine up into the uh, central nervous system which is your brain and uh, basically the muscles uh, rely on these receptors or the brain relies on these receptors to tell where that muscle's moving in time and space so you've got your own uh, inbuilt little radar system going all the time and these nerves provide feedback to the brain so in saying that um, like when you're stretching and we see this in the classes all the time if you close your eyes so you shut off your um, uh, auditory not auditory but your visual system to see where you are in time and space you can stretch further <laughs> it's funny you think you think of oh, that's strange no it isn't because when you see it and you think oh that's too hard that's too low that's too I can't put my 
side of my head on my knees or whatever you shut your eyes and then your mind just has to rely on the radar so your mind has to rely on this these neuro receptors and it can't physically see that so there's a few little tips and tricks that we can do along the way but I just thought I'd like to mention that to you so uh, those words that I put in here you know about the muscle reflex and flexibility factor up to 130 um, percent and all we've really got to do is reset the neuro pathways now that takes time six to twelve weeks to get you on the way but I tell you what it is a hundred percent worth it a hundred a thousand percent worth it because all those aches and pains provided you've got certain nutrition elements in place which I won't go into on this video that's for, that's another education video um, but you will notice a dramatic difference right and most people have got office jobs these days so that is the worst the worst thing that you can do is do what I'm doing right now sitting in a chair talking to people for a long period of time and I'm I'm telling you you know doing the six years of university and all those medical assignments where I'd be on the screens and zoom sessions and God knows what else and sitting on a on a desk in a round a desk for eight to ten hours a day sometimes through the night to, to reach deadlines it was the worst thing I ever did for my body and this is why uh, I'm saying to you that that um, I don't care what job you're doing your health is your greatest asset and um, you really need at least three times a week intensive stretching to uh, counteract all that sitting in the chairs and offices and stuff and as a matter of fact the guy who um, I forget what his name is but the guy who actually created that little system called hyperbolic stretching uh, he was in capacity he was a um, website de uh, designer or something or something to do with IT and basically he was confined to his chair you know s six days a week and he wound up as a cripple and then he thought no bugger this I've got to do something about it so he did and now he's probably one of the most flexible just like Van Dam, very flexible dude but he's taken a little bit of time to achieve that now um, when we we have to sort of build the muscles up to be able to do the, the this sort of uh, stretching as well and the there's a whole lot of different theories about stretching look at the end of the day they're all sort of right in their own sphere so as an example uh, I've had uh, for instance uh, uh, Queensland ballet um, uh, exponents in my martial arts class now they're super flexible they I've had one girl that was in, in the Queensland Ballet right and she was super flexible but the sort of flexibility training we do is a lot more let's say harsh than doing a um, or I don't know whether harsh is the right word but probably different than they would do in the Queensland Ballet even though that, that you know that they're usually hyper flexible actually but this girl did our sort of flexibility which was uh, with the PNF stretching and all this and she was sore for a week on this particular occasion she hadn't been training for a while but she disappeared for a week and came back and said where'd you go she said I've been sore for a week and so what I'm saying here is not that I'm trying to promote people being sore for a week but you've got to break yourself into proper stretching over time six to twelve weeks now to be to enable you to do the sort of stretching that Van Dam does in particular not everyone can do the sideways splits I'm okay on the long splits I'm still working on the sideways splits myself and to do that you've got to build up the uh, gracilis muscles and the abductors now for stretching purposes the you know the so-called bodybuilding type training with weights is not that good for this it's more enduro type strength so in other words your higher reps will give you the static uh, like isometric strength that you need so when we do this the goal I've got here the goal 
of enduro type reps to get the burn in the muscles and gradually build up the lactic acid tolerance. Now this is not a lecture on lactic acid tolerances, but lactic acid is the byproduct um, produced by the body um, when uh, the microondria burns um, fuel, i.e. fat and what have you, through the body cells engines and there's heaps of microondria, those little purple things there in the muscle, that's microondria, so it's there the body's furnace, so they're producing energy so the muscles can work and it gets carried through the bloodstream and everything else like that, so I don't want to get too complicated with that, but uh, the, I'll just repeat this again, the goal of the enduro reps is to get the burn in the muscle and gradually build up the lactic acid tolerances. So when you're holding, say, a kick or holding your leg in a stationary position, it's isometrics that are hanging on, you're hanging on, you know, like that. Um, uh, y you've got lactic acid building up in the muscles and when you do that often enough and with the higher reps, you build up what they call lactic acid tolerance. So you can handle it longer and longer and longer. So we want to get to the point there where you can handle it. Say for instance, you're doing maybe a side kick or something like that, and then you can at least handle that, holding that leg out for 10, 20, 30, 40 seconds. 30 seconds, say, that's, that's not doing too bad. And here we've got Alderman Lee with the uh, hip flexors the um, hamstrings uh, and the adductor muscles ultimately you are strengthening the pelvic floor muscles which is good for both men and women now the pelvic floor really is the bottom of the pelvis it's, yeah, but that's all it, there's a whole um, basically there's, there's muscles through which the hip flexors move and the abductors attach very close to the um, the hip girdle, uh, not the hip girdle, but the bottom part of the hip, um, which I'll show you here. Down here, let's get that right. The ischial tuberosities, see the spine there, right, and the pelvic floor is through here so check you know go onto the google or something and have a look at the pelvic floor and you'll be able to see that very clearly i'll just put that spine back up okay now you can read through that yourself now when the other thing i've put in here is ankle weights now i'm not trying to torture you to death <laughs> although if you you've built up with no weights then just go online and go and buy you know maybe one or two kilos so buy a pair of two kilos and buy a pair of one kilo ankle weights so that you can increase your endurance and flexibility and especially the static flexibility all right so there's a whole system i've got there designed for um building up the strength and building up the enduro strength and building up the static strength all those angles and increasing uh, the burn or the lactic acid tolerance with ankle weights you know <laughs> i'll tell you you know it's uh when you go to two kilo ankle weights and you're holding the leg out there for 10 seconds or more um, or you're actually doing the low, the slow stretches with, with them statically. Uh, it's a whole new challenge. But when you take the ankle weights off, your, your legs feel as light as feathers. So there's a tip there. But you've really got to be instructed with this. But I've just done the routine here. So you can read through the routine yourself. Lunge stretches, uh, you know, side kick stretch, front pike stretch, frog stretch, glute, uh, front leg raise, hip circles, torso twist. Uh, full uh, turning kick, side kick, cock position, etc. Front uh, front turning kick, ten reps. Finish off with adductor frog splits, etc. The above routine is a pre-stretch routine before 
you do the Yun Jun Do stretching or our martial arts stretching or your martial arts stretching could be Taekwondo stretching I originally apart from boxing was uh, you know a Taekwondo exponent for many years under one of the masters uh, but if you do this this is a pre stretch you can do it with ankle weights I do it with work boots on sometimes that's a pre stretch stretch and then you do what I call here the Yun Jun Do routine which includes a hyperbolic stretching you know? now if you do the pre stretch stretch up here you, you're already pre warmed or you separate the pre stretch stretch into another section during the, during the day in other words you might be training say three times a week you know? and that'll be, probably it be at night you know? so you go to the class from 7.30 to 9.30 whatever it is but in the mornings, you sort of wake up and you're a bit, you know, so you do the pre-stretch stretching, this one here, and they're done uh, either first thing in the morning, or you might do mid-morning, or you might do lunchtime. Whenever you can get a spare 20 minutes and just allocate it, put it in your diary, away you go. And I'm telling you, uh, I do this probably along with my normal class classes that I run, uh, it's because I'm stretching twice a week in the class of everyone else. At the end on weekends, on a Sunday night normally, I'll go through the full weights. I've got a weight circuit and then I do the ankle weights, a whole box and die. So I do a bit of a combined one there. And um, in the mornings I'll do this pre-stretch stretch probably two to three mornings and maybe four mornings. Uh, or lunch times depends how I feel now just a little caveat there uh, you can with this because it's sort of a cross between endurance muscle tendon strength muscle strength you got a lot of things happening you're merging everything together you will get sore right now with all muscle soreness and tendon soreness and connective soreness um, you do have to occasionally give that a rest so my advice is this if you're feeling like you know I've pushed it a bit too much just relax forget it for a day or two so the normal thing is when you um, do a full-on stretching uh, class like maybe you've done both of these together uh, you might be sore for the next day and then you just do a light one of these a light pre-stretch stretch and just feel the body to see how it goes right and eventually um, you'll build up probably over about a month you'll build up considerable amount of resistance against the training that you were doing and then the picture is to keep yourself maintained at a certain level right so when I look at the Yun Jun Do stretching or the martial arts stretching or there could be the Taekwondo stretching or whatever martial art you're doing but <coughs> primarily f I'm, I'm f apart from boxing I'm, I'm from a Taekwondo which evolved into Yun Jun Do for me uh, you know we're sort of into the a lot of kicking you know? so this is an overview of what I personally do and of course I learned most of this off our Grand Master, Grand Master Yun Q Yun, who was the Chairman of Technique for the International Taekwondo Federation for 25 years and uh, absolutely super flexible. And this was most of what he did and I just adapted this to suit, you know, my body type. I mean, he was a lot, of course, a lot being oriental, different his uh, different uh, lever lengths than I have. I'm almost six foot and he's five foot two, I think, the Grandmaster Yun. So each person's got a slightly different angle on their stretching ability and it can have something to do with, you know, if they did gymnastics when they were younger and if they didn't, uh, they can still improve uh, at least 60 to 70% if they stick with it. And it's very difficult to stick with it if you're not training in a regular class. I mean, you know, this happens all the time with someone who's undergoing physiotherapy. They might, you know, have some sort of operation or they have some muscle tear or something. They go to a physio or they could go to the chiropractor or whatever. 
and uh, the physio or the health professional will say, okay, do this stretch, do that stretch, do this one. And they'll do it for about two weeks and that's it, they'll never do it again. And I've watched it because I've, I've run classes in gyms for years, so I've watched that people rarely do any stretching bar, a little bit of sort of nominal stuff which wouldn't, wouldn't affect anyone much. So unless you're actually into a specialised stretching class that's focusing on all this, I tell you, you're not going to do it. I know you, you're the average person not going to do anything uh, and, unless it's a structured uh, class and they, they have to attend or want to attend. So when you go through this, you see, the, you know, knee pull, figure four, knee he, uh, kneeling position, point the dog, stretch, pike stretch, lying on the ground, hamstring stretch, pancake, seated L stretch, feet apart either side, sideways stretch, twisting left ear to the right knee, etc. Knee split on the fore, full uh, front split stretch, full side split, split stretch, slow motion kicks on the chair, uh, side kicks, turning kicks, front kicks, front raising and uh, side leg raising and then you commence the class. So you know this is very very important I mean you could just do the stretching on its own but of course I add in the skills and drills of martial art training after it and the thing is when you do this sort of stretching you I always say to students like I'm 67 this year right and when I do this sort of stretching and follow my own system your legs especially feel like steel cat radials. You've, you've got this bounce in your feet, a bounce in your legs from all those tendon connections being trained properly. Um, and uh, it honestly, it makes me feel like when I trained full time with the Grand Master back in the 1989, 91, in that era, you know, just after Bruce Lee movies. <laughs> 75, he came out at Grandmaster Yun, came out here 75. And uh, I joined him 10 years later, 85. I joined up with the Grandmaster and have been associated with him on and off ever since. So, you know, you think about that. So, you know, I hear these people say, Oh, I'm 50 now. Oh, I'm all washed up. No, oh, no, you're not. Oh, I'm turning 60. I'm getting on. Well, really? Um, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Rust will set in due to inactivity. I mean, folks, my grandfather, Bert Healy, was training racehorses, breaking them in when he was in his 70s. Right? So I remember as a kid watching my grandfather do all that, and I thought, no, well, one thing I'm going to do is make certain that I'll remain healthy and uh, capable all my life so i suggest you do too now that's the end of this uh pdf so you can you know download this pdf and have a read through it but it's not going to make much sense unless you, you attend a class so you know go on to uh, yunjundo healy h-e-a-l-y and uh, you can contact me through that website or you can send me an email on at uh, through Healy's Health and A-N-D Fitness at hotmail.com. Okay, hope this video helps. There'll be more coming in the very near future. Thank you very much. Graham Healy over and out.